Kit ED102, and this is a um, command injection vulnerability. So right here, you've got a form, is what you see in your router configuration page. You'll see a page that lets you check your internet connection. This one only lets you run the loopback address because I had to do that because people were using my server to attack other people. So I filtered pings going out. So you can ping the loopback address. You put in an IP address and send pings. And my server sends two pings. You get two replies and then it's done. And um, the code that does it is this. This is the lines of uh, PHP that I use to do this. And what it does is it takes ping minus C2 space and then it adds data from the user. This AC is the data you put in there. So it creates a line of command line, bash command line, and then executes it with the system command. And that means if I put a semicolon here and then put ls, it's going to do ping minus C2 the loopback address, semicolon, ls, because you can do two commands on the same line by separating them with a semicolon in bash. So then it does the ping, and then it does an ls showing you these files on the page. So you have command injection on my server. Now you don't have administrator rights, and you can tell that by, say, using the id command. id will tell you who you are, and that tells you that you are www data, which is not root. That is the Apache user. So you have the ability to run commands on my server, but you're not root. So you can still do some things. So there's some flags to find. You can see the right there when you do ls, you can see there's a, a, a file called flag1.txt. And you have to look inside that file to find the flag. And then you have to find more files named like flag2, flag3, and flag4 hidden in increasingly difficult places to reach on the server and read the contents of them. And I have some commands you should read about here. Using these commands with appropriate switches, you should be able to find those flags. Um, and you, the first two are um, to get started, the next ones are for extra points. And in general, in this whole class, there's going to be some easy ones which is all that's required, and the extra credit part is harder and harder. So if you're a beginner, you might just do the easy part and end that project and go to a different project. The extra credit part is intended to be more difficult. Now here's another one, Image Magic. This is a real vulnerability that affected almost all Linux distributions about eight years ago, um, and it worked this way. If you, I have to have an image to work with, so let's go say to the, um, this one will do. There's an image, I'll save that. My browser is not responding there. Save image as, that's a Homeland Security DHS image. I'll put it on my, downloads is fine, DHS. All right, so I've saved that DHS.jpg image. Now, uh, and ask him what, you know, how to do what is flag two? You will find a file named flag two, and the contents of that flag are flag two. So now I'm going to upload that image, I choose, so this is an image processing program, so I choose a file, and I go to uh, DHS, okay, and I upload the image. And now, this uses the Image Magic Library, which is the standard image uh, manipulation library for Linux, and it's gonna convert that into a thumbnail image, 300 by 300 pixels. And so, this is the thumbnail version, and when you click it, you see the original image. So that's all it does, and this is the command line command that was used to process that image. So this is it working as intended, no exploit involved. To exploit it, you make a file containing this text. So I'm gonna put this in a text editor. I've got one here. I put in that stuff there, and I save it with a file name called exploit.jpg. So it looks like an image. It ends with an image file extension, but all it contains is text. Now if I upload that, choose file, exploit.jpg, and upload image, then it does the convert, and then it prints hello and the date and time. And the reason it did that is because here you see this graphics library added extra features. You could put a color behind your image. So you define the size of the image, and you could fill it with a color that you loaded from a website for some reason. And when they implemented this fill from the web command, they used the curl command and added data that came from the user. 
and they fouled it up. This time it's not a semicolon, it's a couple of other punctuation marks that are required, but the point is they made the same kind of mistake. They took user data and included it in a command that's executed as a shell command. So with the right punctuation marks, you can inject code. And here's the echo hello, and there's the date. So you can add commands here. So for example, if you want to do an ls, you could change that date to ls and save this. And then when you upload that one, go back, upload that exploit, upload. Now you have an ls, and here's a list of files on the server. So there's one called don't look here, don't run me, encode ASCII art, im.php. There's various files up there, and some of these contain flags. So uh, you have to look inside these files and figure out how to get the flags out of them. And it is more difficult than the previous one because this is an extra credit part. And there's even a third part here where you exploit Drupal. Drupal is a WordPress competitor. It is a content management system that lets you make web pages. And um, make, you make web pages beautiful, but Drupal had serious vulnerabilities, a whole series of them called Drupal Geddon, Drupal Geddon 2, and Drupal Geddon 3. So I made a vulnerable website here, and you have to give it the username student1 and the password student1 to see it, because it's so vulnerable that automated attacks will destroy it within hours if I don't put it behind some kind of protection. This will stop the automated attack so it lasts for a while before it gets hacked. And there it is. Um, all right, it's just an empty page running Drupal, but it's running a vulnerable old version of Drupal, and you can attack it with this script here. And you can run it on any machine that runs Linux. For example, the Mac itself can run it. So let me show you what it does here. If I just get a shell on my Mac um, here, a terminal, all right. All right, let's make a, uh, let's go home and then make a directory for 127 and cd into there and nano Drupal dot pi. All right, so here's my Drupal exploit. And um, any, any program that will run Python, and the point of this is it will exploit my server, and to use it, you have to change a file name in three places. This your name, you can only write each file once, and then that file is permanently on my server. So I'm going to call this 311, your name 311, just to make it different. And there's three places where it appears in here. Uh, I'm just changing it to something that hasn't already been used, and I don't imagine your name 311 has been used. There, so I've modified it. I'm going to run it, and then we'll see if it works. So Python 3 Drew. Okay, it ran, and it claims it created a new file on my server with this name, your name 311.txt. So let's see if that works. If it works, you can see it in a web browser. And it did work. See that? That's a smiley face. Semicolon dash parentheses. So if you look at the code, you can see what it did. Here, okay. What's going on? It's the same as these other ones. Somewhere in the registration part of the Drupal page where you can register a user, there's some form where you're putting in your email address or something. And see here is where you get to inject code. And this is the code that was injected, echo, semicolon dash parentheses for a smiley face into this file, your name.txt. And it, the greater than sign is not permitted. So it had to use pipe t, which is another way to accomplish the same thing as greater than sign, to take the output of a command and put it in a file. So this is another command injection, and this is where you can inject commands. So you can modify this thing to add other commands here, like ls and cat and find and other commands to see what's on the server and dump the contents of files. So you will have to keep changing the name of this file. You can only use each file once and write to it. You can't overwrite a file, you can't modify a file, and you can't delete a file with this exploit. So you'll just have to keep creating more files. But um, you can execute commands this way, and then you can find some flags on the server. So this lets you practice simple command injection. And uh, that's where we're at now. Of course, if you want to jump right into the binary exploits, they're down here. And feel free to skip ahead if you like. This is where we start doing the buffer overflows of the kind we talked about tonight. 
But um, we won't do that for a couple of weeks in the official demonstrations because we're going to talk about these other simpler kinds of injection first. All right. The command injection also works through the file name, too. Uh, yes, it might. Um, all right. Uh, the canvas for non-CCSF students is not added yet. I thought I added it last week. Um, yes, it is. It's right here. If you go to the 127 page, you'll see it right here. Oh, no, wait. It's not there. What? I thought I added it. Well, all right, I'll do it when I get home. I added it. I must have forgotten to upload the file or something. Uh, you're right. I made it. In fact, I can find it. Um, well, I think I don't have the shortcut on this machine. Okay, uh, that's annoying. Thanks for telling me. I'll, have, I'll make the Canvas server for non-CCSF students. I thought I put them all up last week, but somehow I fouled it up, and it's on my home machine. Um, all right, let me stop this recording. That's all the recordings for today.